Welcome back to the 100 Dresses. We are on chapter three. And hi, <laughs> I'm here. Chapter three, a bright blue day. Somehow, Maddie could not buckle down to work. She sharpened her pencil, turning it around carefully in the little red sharpener, letting the shavings fall in a neat heap on a piece of scrap paper and trying not to get any of the dust from the lead on her clean arithmetic paper. A slight pucker, puckered, ah, a slight frown puckered her forehead. In the first place, she didn't like being late to school. And in the second place, she kept thinking about Wanda. Somehow, Wanda's desk, though empty, seemed to be the only thing she saw when she looked over to that side of the room. How had the hundred dresses game begun in the first place? She asked herself impatiently. It was hard to remember the time when they hadn't played that game with Wanda. Hard to think all the way back from now when the hundred dresses was like the daily dozen to then when everything seemed so much easier. Sorry, so much nicer. Oh yes, she remembered. It had begun that day when Cecile first wore her new red dress. Suddenly, the whole scene flashed swiftly and vividly before Maddie's eyes. It was a bright blue day in September. No, it must have been October, because when she and Peggy were coming to school, arms around each other singing, Peggy has said, You know what? This must be the kind of day they mean when they say October's bright blue weather. Maddie remembered that because afterwards it didn't seem like bright blue weather anymore. Although the weather had not changed in the slightest. So maybe her mood changed, right? As they turned from shady Oliver Street into Maple, they both blinked. For now the morning sun shone straight in their eyes. Besides that bright flashes of color came from a group of a half dozen or more girls across the street. Their sweaters and jackets and dresses, blues and golds and reds, and one crimson, one in particular, caught the sun's rays like bright pieces of glass. Crimson is a shade of red. It's a really bright shade of red. I wore my, this might be crimson, something really bright. Um, I have my little case here. This is kind of a crimson color. Maybe it's even more burgundy, more maroon crimson. But it's a bright, deep, like a jewel tone. A crisp, fresh wind was blowing, swishing their skirts and blowing their hair in their eyes. The girls were all exclaiming and shouting, and each one was trying to talk louder than the others. Maddie and Peggy joined the group, and the laughing and the talking. Hi, Peg. Hi, Maddie. They were greeted warmly. Look at Cecile. What they were all exclaiming about was the dress that Cecile had on, a crimson dress with cap and socks to match. It was a bright new dress and very pretty. Everyone was admiring it and admiring Cecile. For long, slender Cecile was a toe dancer, like a ballet dancer, and wore fancier clothes than most of them. And she had kept her black satin bag with her precious white satin ballet slippers slung over her shoulders. Today was the day for her dancing lesson. Maddie sat down on the granite curbstone to tie her shoelaces. She listened happily to what they were saying. They all seemed especially jolly today, probably because it was such a bright day. Everything sparkled. Way down at the end of the street, the sun shimmered and turned to silver the blue water of the bay. Maddie picked up a piece of broken mirror and flashed a small circle of light edged with rainbow colors onto the houses, the trees, and the top of the telegraph pole. And it was just, it was then that Wanda had come along with her brother Jake. They didn't often come to school together. Jake had to get to school very early because he helped old Mr. Heaney, the school janitor, with the furnace or raking up the dry leaves or other odd jobs before school opened. Today, he must be late. 
Even Wanda looked pretty in this sunshine. And her pale blue dress looked like a piece of sky, a piece of the sky in summer. And that old gray toboggan cap she wore, it must be something Jake had found, looked almost jaunty, like stylish. So this is her little cap, like a beanie kind of, a toboggan cap. A toboggan is a kind of sled that you would use to like go sledding in the snow down a hill. Maddie watched them absent-mindedly as she flashed her piece of broken mirror here and there. And only absent-mindedly, she noticed Wanda stop short when they reached the crowd of laughing and shouting girls. Come on, Maddie, heard Jake say. I gotta hurry. I gotta get the doors open and the, ring the bell. You go the rest of the way, said Wanda. I want to stay here. Jake shrugged and went up on Maple Street. Wanda slowly approached the group of girls. Have you ever had to do that? Have you ever walked up to a group that's already having fun and enjoying themselves and you walk up as kind of the outsider and you're hoping to be welcomed. You kind of just don't, you're hoping, you're hopeful. You just don't know. Are they going to be friendly? <sighs> With each step forward, before she put her foot down, she seemed to hesitate for a long, long time. She approached the group as a timid animal might, ready to run if anything alarmed it. Even so, Wanda's mouth was twisted into the vaguest suggestion of a smile. She must feel happy too, because everybody must feel happy on such a day. Remember, it's a bright, sunny, beautiful day. As Wanda joined the outside fringe of girls, Maddie stood up too and went over close to Peggy to get a good look at Cecile's new dress herself. She forgot about Wanda, and more girls kept coming up, enlarging, enlarging the group, and all exclaiming about Cecile's new dress. Isn't it lovely, said one. Yeah, I have a new blue dress, but it's not as pretty as that, said another. My mother just bought me a plaid, a plaid, one of the Stuart plaids. Plaid is a kind of checkered, like a crisscross, almost like there was a picture of a plaid here. This is, I think, uh, I think this is Peggy wearing kind of a plaid. You can almost tell it's crisscross. Um, a plaid, there's different kinds of plaids. And in Scotland, I'm, my dad's family is Scottish. And in Scotland, there's all different plaids. And you can kind of tell it's, each family has their own style, their own design of their plaid. I will pause this and show you my family's plaid. So this is the Farquharson plaid. Maybe I'll put it here so you can kind of see the light can come on a little. So this is the plaid of my family. And it's almost like a different plaid for each family. And you can kind of tell they're called clans as well. This is another kind of plaid. It's just plain and simple. It doesn't have anything to do with a clan. It's just a design. So this is another way that People design clothes with plaids, like intersecting stripes. Okay, thank you, sorry. All right, so. So my mother just bought me a plaid, one of the Stuart plaids, another girl said. You can see this beautiful blue skied, crisp autumn day, and there's all the girls, and there is Cecile in her crimson plaid with the crimson socks and the cap and then on the back, you can see a little bit of her black ballet bag. I got a new dress for dancing school. I'm gonna make my mother get me one just like Cecile's. Everyone was talking to everybody else. Nobody said anything to Wanda, but there she was, a part of the crowd. The girls closed in a tighter circle around Cecile, still talking all at once and admiring her, and Wanda was somehow enveloped in the group. Nobody talked to Wanda, but nobody even thought about her being there. Maybe, thought Maddie, remembering what had happened next, maybe she figured all she'd have to do was say something, and she'd really be one of the girls. Remember, Wanda is kind of an outsider. She doesn't have a lot of friends. She goes home alone, she comes alone. So she's really kind of feels left out. So what happens next is pivotal. It kind of changes how things are for Wanda. 
and this would be an easy thing to do because all they were doing was talking about dresses. Maddie was standing next to Peggy. Wanda was standing next was standing next to Peggy on the other side. All of a sudden, Wanda impulsively, like without thinking, touched Peggy's arm and said something. Her light blue eyes were shining and she looked excited like the rest of the girls. What? asked Peggy, for Wanda had spoken very softly. Wanda hesitated a moment and then she repeated her words firmly. I got a hundred dresses home. That's what I thought you said. A hundred dresses. A hundred? Peggy's voice raised itself higher and higher. Hey kids, she yelled. This girl's got a hundred dresses. Silence greeted this and the crowd which had centered around Cecile and her new finery now centered curiously around Wanda and Peggy. The girls eyed Wanda first incredulously, then suspiciously. There's that word again, incredulously. We'll have to, like, they're in disbelief. A hundred dresses, they said? Nobody could have a hundred dresses. I have, though. Now, some of Wanda's speaking, English is her second language. In her home, they speak Polish, and, and she is a newer immigrant to the United States. And so when she said up here, she said, I got a hundred dresses home. That's not grammatically correct, but for learning a new language, that's pretty darn good. You should hear me try to say something like that in German. Wanda has a hundred dresses. Where are they then? In my closet. Oh, you don't wear them to school? No, for parties. Oh, you mean you don't have any everyday dresses? Yes, I have all kinds of dresses. Why don't you wear them to school? For a moment, Wanda was silent to this. Her lips drew together. Then she repeated stolidly, as though it were a lesson learned in school. A hundred of them, all lined up in my closet. Oh, I see, said Peggy, talking like a grown-up person. The child has a hundred dresses, but she wouldn't wear them to school. Perhaps she's worried of getting ink or chalk on them. With this, everybody fell to laughing and talking at once. Wanda looked stolidly at them, pursing her lips together, wrinkling her forehead up so that they up so that the gray toboggan slipped way down over her brow, way down on her brow. Suddenly from the suddenly from down the street, the school gong rang its first warning. Oh, come on, hurry, said Maddie, relieved. We'll be late. Why do you think Maddie's relieved? It was Peggy and Wanda having this inter interaction, this conversation. So Maddie's relieved, maybe because she it didn't feel good to her to have this kind of conversation. It was she knew that Wanda was getting made fun of. Goodbye, Wanda, said Peggy. Your hundred dresses sound beautiful. Peggy's being very much teasing Wanda now. More shouts of laughter greeted this, and off the girls ran laughing and talking and forgetting Wanda and her hundred dresses. Forgetting until tomorrow and the next day and the next, when Peggy, seeing her coming to school, would remember and ask her about the hundred dresses. For now, Peggy seemed to think a day was lost if she had not had some fun with Wanda, winning the approving laughter of the girls. So the, the laughing of the girls, nobody stopped her. And that's what made Peggy, she wanted that approval from all the other girls. They, they all thought she was being funny, but at the expense of Wanda. So not cool. Yes, that was the way it had all begun, the game of the hundred dresses. It all happened so suddenly and unexpectedly, with everybody falling right in, that even if you felt uncomfortable, as Maddie had, there wasn't anything you could do about it was there. Maddie wagged her head up and down. Yes, she repeated to herself, that was the way it began, that day, that bright blue day. And she wrapped up her shaving, shaving and went to the front of the room to empty them into the teacher's basket. And the end of, of this, this chapter, I'll call it the April day.
day that we all start. Enjoy that, enjoy that chapter.